I greet everyone the peace of the Lord. I invite the church to stand up. We're going to open our Bibles in the book of Judges, chapter 15. Ju Judges 15. From, we are going to read from verse 14 onwards. Judges 15, 14. Amen. Judges 15, 14. From verse 14 says the following. Have you found it? Well, let's still read uh, here uh, the pages being <laughs> flipped. When he came to Lehi, the Philistines came uh, sh shouting against him. Then the Spirit of the Lord came mighty upon him, and the ropes that were on his arms became like flax that is burned with fire, and his bonds broke loose from his hands. He found the fresh jawbone of a donkey, reached out his hand and took it, and killed a thousand men with it. Then Samson said, with the jawbone of a donkey, hips upon hips, with the jawbone of a donkey, I have slain a thousand men. And so it was when he had finished speaking that he threw the jawbone from his hand and called that place Ramath Lee. Then he became very thirsty. So he cried out to the Lord and said, You have given this great deliverance by the hand of your servant, and now shall I die of thirst and fall into the hands of, of the uncircumcised. So God split the hollow place that is in Lee and water came out and he drank and his spirit returned and revived. Amen.
Glory to God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. My brethren, we've just read here quickly a description of what took place in the life of a man that was consecrated to the Lord from the day of his birth, Samson. We all know the story of Samson. His strength, the strength that he had because of his consecration from his early days, Samson was not allowed to cut his hair. And Samson, he was risen by God to be a judge upon Israel. The time of the judges came before the kings. So God always set aside, would set aside a man, uh, would set aside a person so that that person would be taken over by the Holy Spirit, would be led by the Lord for him to be able to show to a people that in what God did through him and the power of God. And Samson was one of the last judges before the kings. And the Lord used Samson in a mighty way to deliver the people from the Philistines. Here we read uh, an event in which, in a single battle, he defeats 1,000 soldiers. He, he, find, he finds on his way a jawbone of a donkey, a dead donkey. The jawbone is this part here where the teeth they are connected to, to the bones, the jaw. So he picks up that part and with that a hand he is able to kill 1,000 men in a single battle. The strength of Samson, Samson was not in the person of Samson. But the Holy Spirit would take control of him and give him the means and then with this power supernatural, this divine force, inhuman, God would uh, perform wonders through him to deliver his people. And here we read that after this great battle, after Sans Samson had seen the, those men dead, the word said that Samson was thirsty. And he came to a fountain, and this fountain was dry. There was no water. It's that fountain. And here, the word says that he prayed to the Lord, and his conversation with God was the following. God, will I now die of thirst? That was Samson's prayer. And he prayed to the Lord, placing God's altar, his necessity. Because in, in the way that he was, he would end up dying of thirst. And the word tells us, in verse 19, says the following. So God split the hollow place that is in Lehi, and water came out, and he drank, and his spirit returned, and he revived. Therefore he called it na its name and Hakor, which is in Lehi to this day. My brethren, we have come today to the last Sunday service of 2018. We have here many brethren, servants, with lives consecrated to the Lord. Lives that had many experience, experiences throughout this year. Lives that over, have overcome battles like uh, the rest of us. Brethren that fought with all their strength to earn the, their daily bread and to be able to fulfill their own financial commitments. People that um, were made an effort in every way to come to this day and be able to give glory to God for everything that God has done, for everything that God has operated, the impossible. God many times has done in our behalf. 
if we look to what we were and look to what we are, we are, what we are today, we have many reasons to praise the Lord for. Uh, we have had people here that went to the hospital, people that have overcome infirmities, doors opened up, people that lost their jobs, but the Lord quickly opened a door for them of a new job. How many battles have we been victorious, victorious with? God has honored our name. God has honored each one of you who are here tonight. He honored our families. Parents that have had victories with their children in college, being victorious. Parents that were victorious with their children, um, uh, doing well in school with good grades, overcome another phase in their lives as well. Have parents seen their children getting married in the Lord? Servants of uh, with uh, men and women of the Lord, also servants of the Lord. It's a great blessing. We can say out loud, the Lord has blessed us to this day. We have been victorious in our battles with the theme of this year, with the blood and the word and the promise of God. It is interesting that Samson, at that moment, if he had not received from the Lord, a blessing regarding uh, in, uh, in, uh, in the situation in which uh, the the cave, the, the hollow place that was cracked and the water came out of, uh, he would have been, he would, he would be dead. And that's the situation, the same situation with us here. Many of us, through our own merit and human effort, we would not have been victorious. And here in Samson's situation, he overcame, he was victorious against a thousand men. He was was victorious against many here have also been victorious in their uh, financial life and their in their secular life. Many of here have prospered. But there is another battle which is uh, the battle in our inside of our hearts. And Samson, physically, he had been victorious, but he had a thirst, and this thirst was inside of him. And this thirst cannot be overcome, uh, cannot be removed through human means. Samson, he exercised it, he took possession of something that many of us have, have been doing. He used the means of grace. Samson prayed to the Lord. When Samson saw the difficulty, when he saw that he would not be able to drink water, he used a, of a resource that many of the servants have used, which is prayer, which is fasting, which is seeking the Lord, which is coming uh, to the early dawns and praying to the Lord. And I'm going to tell my bread, I'm going to tell you, my bread, that if we spending all those days in this year having our human victories, but if we do not seek to pr run to the prayer, and uh, run to the means of grace, if we do not not put our lives on God's altar, many here will die of thirst. Many are not going to be able to uh, reach the next year with the same victories. You know why? Because they are going to abandon the Lord. Because what man needs is not a miracle. What man needs is not the consequence of salvation. We need the owner, the, the one that gives the miracle. The, we need the one who paid a price for our lives so that we could be to date here and continue to come into the presence of God. Many who entered here tonight if you do not exercise your prayer, if you don't use the means of grace, if you do not seek the Lord, you will be um, defeated in, inside of your heart. You will be defeated spiritually because you will be um, defeated by your 
discouragement for your, by your frustration. You'll be overcome by your tiredness. You will be defeated by your weakness. That's why the Lord tonight calls us to play, put our knees on the ground and knock at the door of grace. How many of you here have done this this year? You should have had victories in every area of our life, but how many of you have used prayer as a uh, means to grace? How many of you have put their knees on the on the floor, have come early in the morning to early dawns uh, and fasted so that a miracle could take place in your lives? How many of you? If you're not doing this, you need at this moment to remember one thing. You will only be victorious. You'll only be victorious in your spiritual life. You will only have a special experience with the Lord if you place your life in the altar of the Lord. Man does not come to God because of his merit. Man does not come to God. He does not come to eternity because everything is fine, because he is able to pay his taxes, because he paid the rent, because he paid the school of his son, because he, he paid installments of his cars. Samson defeated a thousand men. What he was, what was human, he was able to be victorious on. But when he came to the moment of miracle, when he came to uh, satisfy his interior thirst, when it came, came the moment where he needed to have an intimacy with God in order for him to receive a renewal, in order for him to receive something that would give him the refreshing, Samson had to uh, resort to prayer. You know why? Because prayer is everything to a Christian. The place of the refreshing, the place of the renewal is on prayer. The source will always be there. God is always where we are. The Lord Jesus is always where the need is. Whatever you are, you seek this fountain inside of you because you are, have already been redeemed. You are a person that is consecrated to, to the Lord. You are a man or woman that have already been washed in the blood of Jesus. But in order for you to be victorious, many times the sadness, many times for you to defeat uh, anguish and depression that takes hold of man's heart, you need to overcome it in prayer. The fount is always there. But because it's there, does, doesn't mean that you open up. Samson had to s uh, speak with the Lord, say, Will I die now of, of thirst? He was seeing the source of the fountain. He knew that there was water there. He had to pray to the Lord, saying, God, am I going to die of thirst? How many people here are dying of thirst? How many people are missing out on uh, wonderful experiences with the Lord? How many servants, how many Christians? are not seeing the miracle of God happening in their lives. Not because God is not God of power, but because you are limiting the operation of the Holy Spirit, but because you don't have faith to open up your mouth and pray to the Lord. How many marriages are being dissolved? How many homes are being dissolved? You know why? Because they don't pray to the Lord. How many children? How many youth here is going to the world how many families are losing their children to the world to the drugs to devices the because the, they do not bend their knees and plead to the Lord for the miracle the fount is there Jesus is there but we need to pray to the Lord and the Christian many times has only strength if he uses prayer in the service the Lord 
is calling our attention to this. Tonight, God is conclaiming us to exercise prayer. Maybe this year you may not have had faith. This year you may not have had time. Maybe you have not had this awakening to live the prayer and to live through the miracle and to live the dependency of the Lord. Maybe you with all that you have, your preoccupations, your tiredness and all your responsibilities, you may not exercise what God has already given us as a weapon, as a secret, which is salvation, is fasting, which is which are the means of grace. But tonight the Lord is calling us to live the impossible in order for God to do and it on our behalf. Lord the Lord is calling us to start a new year in the presence of the Lord as a church, the body of Christ, as vessels, as people that are dependent, people that are in need, people that know their commitment, they know where God is, they know the word, they know the praises, they know everything that is spiritual, but many times they do not exercise this. The fount is there. The fount will be wherever you are, at work. The fount is in your marriage. It is inside of the church. Inside, inside of your home. Whatever you will be. The fount will be there too. But in order for you to open up, in order for you to have access to the refreshing, and in order for you to see the miracle from the part of the Lord, the action of the God, the moving of the water, you need to exercise what is the secret which is prayer. May God use your life with great strength. May God remove maybe your, your shyness, maybe the lack of faith, and that the anguish and the frustration may not be an impediment for you to exercise this and that in the new year you may be in every aspect of your life not only in the human life in the professional life but also in your spiritual life in your closeness with God you may be also a blessing and that God may give you what you need what the Holy Spirit is testifying in your heart right now what you desire in your spiritual life you want to be an usher. You want to be a woman ahead of the women group. You want to be uh, called to the praise group. You want to be a deacon, a pastor. That's the moment for you to pray to the Lord and say, Lord, humanly speaking, I don't need anything. But I need you to just transform your heart. I need to take another direction. I need to have new actions in my spiritual life so that you may give me the means and that you may call me and that I may have a life and a soul, a heart that is transformed, renewed, where there is peace, hope, grace, and mercy of God may have a place in each heart here present. May God bless us. May God, at this moment, the praise group is going to sing a song. And you, at this moment, place your life before the altar of the Lord. And ask the Lord to renew your life. May, ask the Lord to renew your heart.
exploit to God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Glory to Jesus. I invite the brethren to stand up. I'd like to invite Pastor Sabado to be here. The Lord has shown a, a youth, a male who came, came here tonight, has been taken over by a Great Depression. He even thought about taking his own life. This is all with him, this struggle, his interior struggle. And tonight, he struggled a lot to come to the service. But, the, but who brought here tonight was the Holy Spirit, because the Lord wants to give you an experience. And you tonight, you're going to find in the Lord of Lords, with the Lord Jesus, who is the Savior of your life, you will meet with Jesus, and you will be delivered. And you'll find the truth, and the truth, truth shall set you free. And so there is no depression, there is no action of man, there is no action of the enemy of our souls, greater than the, that is stronger than the action of our Holy Spirit. If you want tonight, you will open up your heart, you will plead for help, and in the name of Jesus, you will leave this place healed, because the fount is going to open up for you, and you're going to leave this place refreshed. You will leave this place with peace, the peace that you cannot find anywhere else. And nothing in this life can give you this tranquility, this calm. You can only find in Jesus. The Lord also has shown that tonight the Lord is operating greatly in this place. The Trinity, the Father and Son and the Holy Spirit, they are here interceding for us, fighting on our behalf, making us see the op one miraculous operation in the power of God and showing to us the way. This way is the Lord Jesus. Glory to God.
Amen. Glória to God. Glória to Jesus. Amen. Glory to God. My brother and sister, the Lord tonight is asking us to tell you this. For everything that we have been able to achieve this year, if you do not remain in the Lord, you will give up on your spiritual walk. The secret for your life, for our life, is to remain in the Lord. If we do this, the Lord will continue operating miracles. The fount will always open up. And you will see the glory of God. If you want to make a commitment with the Lord so that the year 2019 may be a different day, different year in your life, spiritually speaking, you can kneel down and you will end the service praying for those who want the ushers and and deacons can stand up here with the pulpit and we at this moment will be praying for those who desire and feel in their hearts that they need to have a new and different position or even a commitment with the Lord yeah, Lord I want to remain I can I don't want to give up Lord I cannot walk backward. I cannot look behind. I need to look only to you, Lord. This should be your prayer. This should be our prayer. Let us pray with the lay laying of hands. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Holy is the name of the Lord. Lord, open the fount the fount in my marriage, the fount in my spiritual life, in my home, at work, in my health. Lord, open up the fount, Lord. Glory to Jesus. Holy, holy is the name of the Lord. Glory to God. Amen. Holy, holy is the name of the Lord.
Oh, to Jesus. Beloved children, look and see what the Lord has done for you. For this new year that is approaching, will be for you a year of prayer because I give knowledge to my, my servant to say that to you. I, at this moment, I am placing in the hands of my valiants heavenly weapons to go to the fight. My children, I will give you strategies to overcome battles that from a very long time has uh, remained in our life. And you see, my children, that God has done this for you. And to you, my son, I tell you, that I'm cutting from the root the evil that was upon you from the bottom of your feet to the top of your head. You will be covered with the power of the Lord for, from the power of the Holy Spirit because there is someone that is pleading for you in that country. Do not That person does not forget about you in, in, in their prayers. And doing this work in your life, and to you, my daughter, you entered in this place for the first time, and your concern is with your daughter who is in Brazil. And now I'm going there at this moment and giving her a blessing of health. And you see that work will begin through your life, and I'll be able to reach many, and my beloved servants, praise my name, because many will be surprised because soon is my arrival. I am closer than you can imagine. And I bring tonight the comfort, the renewal for your lives. Because the yoke have been broken, the shackles have been broken, and my people will advance the next, this coming year. And now, my son, I renew you. My children, I renew, renew you. And I said that my the vineyard is mine, the flock is mine. I am the, your God. That He's doing the work. Praise the name of your God. Sing songs and adore your uh, God, because I am in your midst. Hallelujah. Let us stand up, my brethren. Back to Jesus.
Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Let's be your name, Lord. Lord, we want at this moment to praise and exalt your holy name. I want to glorify the Lord for this wonderful spiritual feast, for the visitation of the Holy Spirit, for your angels have been sent here to bring the answers to our prayers. We praise you, Lord, because we are privileged, because we can hear a sweet voice, and because we are able to hear your advices, Lord, and your promises, and to know that they will be fulfilled in our lives. Receive our adoration and take us home in peace is a prayer that we say in the name of Jesus. And your name we say that the wonderful grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, our eternal Father, and the sweet and tender consolation of the Holy Spirit be put out upon all of us now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. The church may be seated. We have a, a couple of announcements. Boy, the message finished at the right moment. <laughs> we have a, a couple of advices, uh, uh, warning, um, messages for tomorrow. We're going to have a vigil tomorrow. It's going to start at 10.30 of night. Everyone will be invited. We're going to have to do this here in this church for the last time by faith. Right? Uh, the next year we'll really be in the new church with a lot of space put lots more lot more best blessings amen tomorrow we are all invited we're going to the praise group the youth they sometimes they come late for everything they they we need to come on time they need to come early the deacons the pastors me <laughs> we need to come early in order to take care of our, of the people that come here this is our house if you are not here to receive our guests we need to set everything in order let's begin this coming year with greater commitment with the time with the service we're going to have a new life the Lord has already said so let's set the house in order let's start the year 2019 with a greater commitment with the Lord not with the pastor but with, with the time, commitment with the activities of the church, with the meetings, with everything. In this coming year, we're going to be looking at this and brethren that have a function that are not doing their job, we're going to fix it up. 2010 was a great year with feasts, but now, this new year, we're going to start a new year correctly to do what God has called us for. If you don't want, you're going to sit on the bench. You also participate. We're going to be a member. We're going to participate. We're going to be a blessing. Brethren with functions. We need to have responsibilities. Amen. And tomorrow, after the vigil, we're going to have a dinner to everyone. Uh, the guests also will be well received. The women are uh, taking care of everything. We have uh, also time if you want to collaborate, if you want to participate, you need to help with the dish with, uh, and the financial uh, support. We are uh, renting tents and chairs and tables. That, uh, some women are, are preparing the food. Everything is being done for us. And this dinner is one thing that we cannot have, chicken. There, <laughs> there are a couple of chickens running around here. It's chickens forbidden. If you bring chicken, you need to bring a proof that you you bought it on Walmart. And say, Abra, today I counted how many chickens we have walk, running around here. I took pictures. <laughs> I didn't even give to Elias because it's already here. I have two roosters. No. Please, do me the favor, uh, not, do not steal my, my chickens here that I'm raising, that live around the church. I know how many there are, and choose them, I'm going to, don't do this, 
and coming here and stealing my chickens and bring tomorrow for the people to eat. I would speak with Paula. Chickens forbidden. You can bring duck, anything you want, but not chicken. <laughs> Amen. So whoever wants to collaborate, seek Sister Paula and Brother Luciano. Tomorrow going to be at six o'clock, and we're expecting lots of guests. So the bread and be pay attention to this. Amen. Pastor Sab, do you have anything else to say? Anything else? Amen. If somebody desire a prayer, we are here at your disposal. Peace of the Lord.